hi in this session i would like to talk about list list is a you know collection of objects especially sequence of objects when you have sequence of objects then how you store them in computer there are two ways to store them in computer one model is contiguous memory model second model is non contiguous memory model in contiguous memory model really you want contiguous memory then we have to reserve the space why because we are in a multi programming environment where operating system is going to decide your memory then example let's say you want 100 consecutive memory locations then if you don't reserve then os cannot give you 100 memory locations consecutively why example if you ask in an installment way like 5 today 5 tomorrow in that way what can happen is first time when you ask 5 memory locations then it might give you 1 2 3 4 5 second time when you ask 5 then the remaining 6 7 8 9 10 which are consecutive to this 1 2 3 4 5 might not be available because we are in multi programming environment where these other variables or other memory locations might be used by another program that's a problem then whenever you want consecutive memory locations definitely we have to reserve it right so that's one disadvantage of you know this model second one is non contiguous memory model in that we don't require to reserve the space so what we do is here dynamically we ask like in installment base today whenever you want to store some data then simply ask one memory location two ways second time tomorrow let's say again you want data or you want memory then you ask in that way at any time you can ask but consecutiveness is not guaranteed that's why this memory model is non -con consecutive otherwise non contiguous model right so when you have contiguous model we have to reserve the space in non contiguous you don't require to reserve the space then we are getting the flexibility how flexibility comes so i don't require to reserve it so that i am not wasting the space here you are wasting the space why example let's say you have decided to take thousand consecutive memory locations then in the worst case what can happen is your requirement requires only otherwise your requirement uses only three locations because you know it's all guess right you guess that you need thousand but thousand data items may not be available with you in your program then if you will go with three memory locations or th i mean you guess three when you guess three what can happen is your requirement may grow because in the li real life anything can happen when you guess that you want thousand then more than thousand might require otherwise less than thousand that's why reserving the space definitely will waste the memory but here you are not reserving the space then what can we do is you know on the fly whenever we want uh, whenever we have data items we can go for memory that's why always you know i suggest to go with this model but what are the advantages so that you know people use array i will tell you one advantage of this array is we are not wasting the space in the terms of pointers you see here so here since all are consecutive memory locations and when you have you know starting address of this array like one one's address is 100 to access the other data items you don't require any pointers directly i can say like this starting address is 100 next address is 101 next address is 102 in that way so always we can find out every object's address right without remembering them here these memory addresses are not stored only data items are stored so whenever you want to access the seventh memory location i can do 100 plus 7 so only thing i should remember is 100 but here that is not the case example if you want to access all these data items then first we should start at 100 then you can access one but to go to 200 we don't know that it is in 200 right then somehow we should remember we should have mechanism for remembering the next nodes address that's why you know we maintain one extra box where we store the next box address that's why we say that this is link list here we are linking the list okay so finally there are two kinds of models possible one is contiguous model second one non contiguous contiguous is also known as array non contiguous is also known as link list so link list can be implemented in multiple ways we say that link list is a data structure array is a data structure link list data structure can be implemented in three ways majorly there are uh, so many ways one is single link list second one double link list third one is circular link list we'll see various implementations one by one before that let me summarize array advantage is what 
no wastage of space in terms of pointers but we have to reserve the space when you reserve the space you may over utilize the space otherwise you may under utilize the space that means you may require more than what you reserved otherwise you may waste your space when it comes to dynamic memory allocation otherwise you know link list in that one so you are wasting the space for pointers but you are getting the flexibility that means you know you don't require to reserve the space so you can dynamically add the data example let's say today you have four data items suddenly you realize that you you need six more data items what we can do is so we can create six separate boxes like this i mean there is a provision you can ask operating system at any num i mean at any number of this kind of boxes since they are not they are not contiguous then your os can give maybe 500 600 700 so take them and link them and after that you link it to maybe end otherwise wherever you want one more serious drawback of array i will show you example you have array of you know five memory locations like this one two three four five and you have data one two three four five suddenly you wanted to insert 3.5 after three that is what your requirement that means you want to manipulate your list then what you have to do is you have to definitely because i can't keep 3.5 in between 3 comma 4 because there is no place then we have to move 4 to here 5 to here that's a problem in the worst case what can happen is if you have n elements like this okay 1 2 3 so on n suddenly you wanted to insert 0 here in front of the i mean before 1 then 1 has to be moved, 2 has to be moved, 3 has to be moved, there is no escape, okay. Then definitely you have to have this kind of, to have this kind of thing, definitely we have to move n elements. I can say that time complexity wise, it is time consuming, right, order of n. When it comes to link list, it's pretty easy. How? When you have, let's say, 1, 2, 3, which are linked, then what I do is I create a box, I write 0 then since they are not consecutive then directly i can link like this 0 to 1 1 already linked to 2 2 is already linked to 3 3 is already linked to 4 then this entire thing takes only one unit of time why create a box one unit of time write value one unit of time so the link part will be there you link from there to this box that takes one unit of time so after all four or five units of time so that's why i can say that manipulations in link list are easier than manipulations in array that's why people go for link list representation though there is small wastage of you know space but i can say that we have wastage of space in array also why whenever you reserve the space probably your requirement might grow then your array might not accommodate all your data items then it spoils the game isn't it that's why most of the times i prefer link list unless i have a special reason for using array what is that special reason is my requirement is rigid that means i always require only 100 memory locations one thing i am going to use all that 100 locations then go for array because you have better knowledge about your data growth correct then then you go for array if you don't have any you know knowledge about your you know growth of your data that means how much data items you want then definitely you go for link list understand so finally we have realized that link list is the best model to represent your data isn't it so let's go with the link list there are three kinds of link list possible single double and circular we'll see one by one in single link list every node will have information followed by pointer to the next node only one pointer such link list is called single link list okay now we'll see how to implement this kind of single link list in c programming for that first we should focus on this box how to create this box is very important step we'll try to learn so this is the box and we'll try to understand what are the data types we have in this box one is we have to write data here integer right that's why we need one integer data second one one pointer data we'll see what is the pointer type later at this moment we have one pointer one integer now to have this kind of box in c programming we have syntax called struct okay so we have to write struct followed by let's say we have to give this kind of uh, name to this kind of box example i can say this node you can say box otherwise anything whatever you say so in that struct node we have to explain to the compiler that what are the things you are going to store so mr compiler please listen 
I would like to store one integer and the name of that integer is information and I would like to store a pointer and the name of the pointer is next. Okay, This is let us say next. This is info. Now my question is why we have to mention that it is info and it is next I will tell you later. Okay, At this moment you understand that so we need one variable name info one variable name next. Now this entire box is nothing but int info and some pointer. But what is the pointer type we have to create? Think about it. This pointer is going to point to dash one data type. Let us say that data type is something some x let us say. Can I say that this is a pointer to x? Yes. So finally next is a pointer to x. But what is that x? x is nothing but you know a box. So what is the data type of that box? Struct node. That is why x is nothing but struct node. Let me replace x with struct node. That is why this will become struct node pointer. Understand? So this is the way we can create this kind of boxes. This is also known as self referential structure. Why? Here next is going to point to that means data type of next is again equal to see uh, sorry this pointer is pointing to a data type which is nothing but our data type. So we are referring itself I can say correct. So this is self referential data structure. Now we want this kind of boxes. Yes, we know how to create it. But one thing I would like to tell you whenever you write this syntax, your compiler will not give you any memory. Why sir? This is called declaration. Your compiler understands that you need this kind of data type, but it will not give you. If you want it, then we have to ask example, let us say you want integer kind of data type. How you ask? Int x, right? You specify the variable name. Here you did not specify the variable name. You simply said you just explain your compiler how struct node should look like. Understand? If after this struct node and everything, if you write b, then what happens? Your compiler understand that b is the variable of this data type struct node, and it give it will give you the memory. Example: When you write this one uh, struct node definition, I mean declaration followed by b, then your compiler understands that you want one variable called b. And this is the memory representation of that B, right? Example: the starting address of this memory box is 100. Then we can refer that 100 using address of B. Whenever I say address of B, it is 100. Now you can access this position and this position most often. Whenever you want to refer this one, you write simply what is the name of this box? When you come to B, this is info. This is next, isn't it? That's why this will become B dot info and this would become b dot next so we can modify b dot info b dot next what do you want nothing right so if you are able to access this one and this one we don't want anything more and somehow you should know the address of this box using that address of b we can do it if you know these three things we can do anything let's say b dot information i would like to write 5 simply write b dot info equal to 5 sir i want to write here null can i write yes when i write b dot next equal to null that means Currently my box, I mean this position is not pointing to anything. That means I can say this box is not pointing to anything. Simple. Now I will tell you how to create this kind of very big linked list. For that what you can do is create so many such variables. Struct node, this is one method. Struct node b1, comma b2, comma b3, comma b4. Whenever you do that, what happens is four boxes will be created for you like this. Now what else? So there is some extra work we have to do that is linking them correct and writing the data. What I do is I write a code like this. We know that whenever I create struct node b1, b2, b3, b4, b1, b2, b3, b4 will be created like this. This is a pictorial representation and always my suggestion is whenever you are dealing with uh, pointers and structures always you know initially at least you represent otherwise you imagine the data types okay. So this is b1, this is b2, b3, b4 and this is the data type. Now b1 dot info is what? 1. b2 dot info is what? 2. Sir why are you writing it? Because I would like to create this linked list. Then you say b3 dot info equal to 3 and b4 dot info equal to 4. Fine. We have created linked list now almost. So we have written data. The only thing is we have to link create. So b1 dot this one is what? Already we know that b1 dot next. What if I write 
that would link to B2. Simple. This is a pictorial representation, correct? So B1 dot next should be equal to address of this box. That's why it is address of B2, right? Similarly, we can say B2 dot next equal to address of B3. B3 dot next equal to address of B4. But what about B4 dot next? B4 dot next is simply null, right? So that it will link to you know nothing. So this is a pictorial representation. So almost done, right? So we have created the link list, but we did lot of you know I can say tedious work, otherwise laborious work. So we have created four boxes and we have linked them. And one thing we can't scale it. So scalability is very important aspect of programming. That means if you have thousand memory locations or thousand data, then you would be creating thousand this kind of variables, right? And managing them will be very difficult. And one more thing I would like to ask. What are you, you know, what are you going to do with that variable names? Nothing. You want memory locations, correct? Actually, you are interested in memory locations rather than thousand variable names. That's why do we have any model where we only get memory like this, but not variable names like B1, B2, B3, B4 is my question. Try to answer it. Yes, it is possible through dynamic allocation also known as malloc. We'll see how to use malloc and try to get you know this kind of link list. Okay, let's learn dynamic allocation. So for that we use malloc, right? So you tell me what are we going to do? We are going to create this kind of box now. That is what our goal, right? So we have seen static allocation. Now we'll see dynamic allocation. Already we know the data type. What is the data type? This is struct node. Remember it. And we have already declared it. Now. Using the dynamic allocation, I'm going to create this kind of memory box. For that, I, I will use a method called malloc. So for malloc, we have to pass size of the object what you want, right? This is the object type is struct node. Simply write size of struct node. So this is the syntax of you know malloc. When you do that, what happens is so malloc will try to allocate memory for you exactly equal to size of struct node. That means this kind of box will be allocated and usually that kind of boxes will not have any variable names. It's just memory. Now when you have this kind of memory, then how to access it, right? For that definitely we have to remember the starting address. Example, this memory starting address is 500. We have to throw it. Otherwise, we have to return it to the caller, right? So that's why malloc returns the address of this box. This is your responsibility to hold it. So that's why left side. As an assignment, what you do is you store it using a variable, let's say p. Now you tell me what should be the data type of p so that it can hold this 500. 500 is what? Struct node pointer, isn't it? Otherwise, 500 is the address of struct node. Then who is capable of holding address of struct node? Struct node pointer. That's why p will become struct node pointer. So in that way, I can create struct node pointer p. So it's a single box. Okay, why it is single box? Any address is a single box. So because you are just storing the address, to store the address, we need single box and it's a pointer. So where you are going to store 500, that is what will happen. So there are three steps in this one. Step number one, step number two, step number three, I can say. Okay. So I'm not talking about order, but I just want to say that there are three tasks. One is getting the memory. Second one, creating the variable P and third one, assigning that address to this box. Now from now onwards, whenever you do this thing, what happens is, so this box will be pointed by P. From now onwards, I show like this. Whenever I show like this, my intention is P is a box and it's a pointer. That's why it will have address of this box. Example, this address of this box is 300. Then you can guess that P is 300. If this is 700, then definitely this will be 700. You should remember it now. The scenario is from now onwards, I don't show this box, but still you should understand if I whenever I keep an arrow, you should understand that that arrow is a variable, right? Let's say now this P is nothing but arrow to this one, then P is a pointer to this box. Now we know that this box has two, you know, again, uh, sub data types, otherwise, you know, two fields. One is info, second one is what pointer next, right? So next. So how to access them is the question. Already we have seen when you have you know, owner to it, that means whenever you have a variable name for it, then how to access it b1.info and b1.next. 
This time what we do is whenever you have a pointer to any box then the syntax is see this is inspired from this pictorial representation p this is a cap okay p cap what is this field info so in that way we can access this one from now onwards second one p cap next so in that way happily we can access these two memory locations okay now if you want to know the address of this box it is nothing but content of p simply print p then you can access that address of this box that's why again we have three various things understand now there is one more way of you know accessing this info that is first of all p is a pointer to this box right whenever you have a pointer to any object then when you refer star p then we will go to that object okay so whenever you write star p what happens is we will reach to this object now in this object info is nothing but what a subfield how to access a subfield dot info right so star p will become now this box this box dot info this box dot next so that's why one more syntax is possible that is star p dot next in that way also we can access but this thing is more readable and you know more convenient for us right rather than writing this complex expression understand from now onwards i use p dot p cap info and p cap next to access this box right so remember it and one more advantage of this dynamic allocation is whenever you want to deallocate you can deallocate this box how sir simple through you know whenever you did malloc and malloc returns some address right where it is in p right then immediately you write free p whenever you write free p then that memory will be deallocated in that way we can deallocate the memory whenever you want so you get flexibility again isn't it if you go through static allocation like struct node b something like this then what happens is so this box b is lifetime otherwise you know it will be allocated for you but when it will be deallocated we don't know it is not in our control compiler will take care of that then what can happen is sometimes so let's say really you don't want to use a variable b but still that may be active and you will be wasting lot of space isn't it that's why so malloc will help you in controlling your variables whenever you want to have control over your variables or memory locations better you allocate them through malloc but you should be a professional programmer and you should have a pure control or you know a clear control on your variables then only we can uh, deallocate whenever we want isn't it now we'll see some more details about this link list so here we are going to create this box so many times for that we use malloc right but rather than writing malloc 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 so many times we create a function so in that function i embed this code malloc size of struct node malloc returns void pointer okay so if you store that void pointer into struct node pointer then automatically that will be converted to struct node pointer if you store it in character pointer that will behave like character pointer that's why malloc returns void pointer remember that's why no type casting is required so malloc whatever it returns you simply store it in whatever the data type you have since malloc is going to give you know struct node box then what will be the suitable pointer to access that one struct node pointer right that's why we write struct node pointer p but generally i don't write it why i am going to return it so i am going to return this malloc to a method called get node okay so get node is like this in this get node i write return malloc size of struct node the return type of get node is what now see because it malloc is going to give void pointer then either i can take it into void pointer but i would like to use it in use it as struct node pointer that's why i will create return type of get node as struct node pointer the advantage is now automatically that return void pointer will be converted to struct node pointer now you can use it as a struct node pointer that's it now ready so can i call it once yes if you call it once what happens we'll see just simply write get node when you do get node so automatically this code will be executed so return malloc size of struct node malloc will be executed first uh, because of that one box will be created we know that exactly it says type is struct node and what else that return address let's say 500 that will be written to you but if you simply call and if you don't take the return type of this get node in somewhere then you know unnecessarily memory leakage will happen why so get node simply allocates memory for you and the return address is given for you but you are not taking it that's why every get node method call otherwise this function call should return the value to someone that's why who is going to take struct node pointer the return time is struct node pointer simply 
struct node pointer p so understand this step because of this step p is going to have you not know, this box address now get node is going to return struct node pointer but here malloc returns void pointer but whenever void pointer is returned to struct node pointer automatically that will be converted to struct node pointer that's why automatically now i can say that you are going to return so get node is going to return struct node pointer and p is going to take struct node pointer so no explicit type casting is required now you have p which is pointing to this box we know the syntax now obviously this place is nothing but p cap info this place is nothing but p cap next fine now i would like to create these many boxes and i would like to link them so rather than focusing on that area i would like to give you one easy technique first don't create link list before that please learn how to insert a node in front of the given link list so we discuss this one first insert in front once you learn this insert in front then this part will be easy creating the link list will be easy right let's begin with insert in front so for insert in front what are the things are required first of all you should remember the starting address of this link list correct 